All right, so today we are going to be seeing how to solve some more quadratic equations that we haven't been able to solve previously. And it's going to start with a little bit of practice and review that we're going to be building on. So start, please, by factoring these two equations, or these two expressions, rather, on your own paper. So for the first one, in order to factor that, notice it's just a plain old x squared, which makes our lives easier. So we see what adds to negative 15 and multiplies to 36. And those two numbers are negative 3 and negative 12. So there's our factor form. That one's factored now. All done. The second one. If you leapt straight to using box method on the second one, you're forgetting a critical step. The first thing you always want to do is see, can I factor anything out? In other words, can I divide all of the terms by the same number? In this case, you can. You can divide all three terms by 5. So I'm going to do that first. So we go 5 outside because we're just using distributive property in reverse. And inside would be x squared plus 5x minus 14. Now we look at that quadratic that's inside the parentheses and we see can I factor that further? And we can because our, it is a quadratic and there's two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to negative 14. The 5 is still going to just linger out front and then the two numbers that add to 5 and multiply to negative 14 are negative 2 and 7. And so there's your final answer. So today what we're going to do is we're going to turn each of those two expressions we started with and we're going to turn them into equations set equal to zero here. And we're going to solve these equations. Now, before we get into how we do solve it, I do want to take a look at how we don't solve it. Because invariably somebody says, well, can't we just subtract 36 from both sides? Technically, yes, you can. But so far it hasn't been helpful. Okay, uh, can we then just divide x out of the left-hand side? Well, if you do, yes, that becomes x minus 15, but the right side is 36 over x. I'm sorry, 6 over x. That is not helpful. That was not beneficial for us. So, okay, so dividing by x didn't really work. Um, is there anything else we could do? Not really. Because there's an x squared and an x, there's not a way to just combine those two. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to factor this. So first step, write each of them in factored form. Tiny detail, but important detail. Notice the equal zero carries down. I still have to have it set equal to zero. Part of the reason for that being such a big deal even though it's a very fine point, is that later on we will be looking at problems like this that are not set equal to zero, and by having that equal zero, it tells you that you can actually solve it. Because you can't solve it if it's not equal to zero. At least, not without first making it equal to zero. All right, so we factored them first. Then we need to see, okay, how do I solve it? I'm going to tell you right now, one of the answers for the first one is 12. And I want to show you why it ends up being 12 here. If I plug 12 back into that equation, 12 minus 12 times 12 minus 3 equals 0. Well, 12 minus 12 is 0. 12 minus 3 is 9. Does that equal 0? 0 times 9 is zero. So yes, that worked. That's proof that 12 was a solution. Now why was it a solution? Because of what happened right here. Since one of those parentheses became zero, zero times whatever the other parentheses ends up being is zero because zero times anything is zero. So since these two parentheses are being multiplied, both of them set equal to zero are solutions. So the solutions for that first one 
are a positive 12 and a positive 3. All right, second one. In this case, uh, let's start by taking a look at the first parentheses there, the x minus 2. Uh, what minus 2 equals 0? If you're not sure, by the way, you could always write it as its own little equation, x minus 2 equals 0. Notice we'd add 2 to both sides. So that tells us that x is 2. The question that usually ends up coming up is, do I now need to multiply that by 5? Well, if I plug 2 into the parentheses, do I get a 0? Yeah. If I plug 10 into the parentheses, do I get a 0? No. So, no, you do not multiply it by the 5. The reason is because if I plug 2 in for x, I get 5 times 2 minus 2 times 2 plus 7, which happens to give me 5 times 0 times 9. 5 times 0 is still 0. So just by making the one parenthesis equal 0 was enough. So one solution there is x equals 2. What about the other solution? What plus 7 equals 0? And again, if you're not sure, you can always write it out as its own little equation like that. Notice we would be subtracting 7 from both sides. So yes, x equals negative 7 there. And so that's how we end up going about solving these. So if you have a problem that has both the x squared and the x in it, you need to solve it by factoring it and then set each of the parentheses equal to zero individually. Now to practice that idea, I'd like you to please to solve these two. Work them out in your own paper first, and yes, of course, we'll go through them together. So in solving that first one, of course, the first thing we need to do is factor it. I hope you didn't start by leaping into the box method on that one, because you notice we can divide them all by two. So start by factoring that 2 out of every term at the start of that problem. Then you can worry about what adds to the middle number and multiplies to the last number. So then we find the two numbers that add to 8 and multiply to 15. You get 3 and 5 there. Now this is the work we do. This is the work you have to show. At a certain point, some of you are going to say, well, do I actually have to write out the factored form if I can do it in my head? Yes. You'd be amazed how many errors I can see start cropping up as soon as people stop writing down the factored form. So from experience and seeing lots of people do this, always write down the factored form. Then once you have the factored form, then it's what makes each of the parentheses equal 0. So what plus 3 equals 0 and what plus 5 equals 0 ends up being negative 3 and negative 5. For that second problem, can we start by dividing out the 2? No. no. Because we can't divide the minus x by 2. So instead, you got to use the box method. Get that factored form. When you've used box method, this is what you should be coming up with for your picture, your completed box. Remember, that's just the work you show, though. <coughs> Actually write out the factored form that results from it. Remember, we read across the top for the first parentheses, read down the left side for the second parentheses. And now we still need to figure out what the solutions are. Remember, the factored form is the work, but it's not the answer. The answer is going to be what x equals. And in this case, there's a little bit more to that one. Because, sure, the x plus 2, that one's fairly straightforward, right? There we should get x equals negative 2. But, this 2x minus 5, that one's a little bit more complex. Can you tell me off the top of your head, 2 times what minus 5 equals 0? Yes, there's 
zero, if you can, five. great. If you can't, there's an easy way to figure it out. You want to know what makes 2x minus 5 equal 0. So you can write it as its own little equation there and solve it. So we add 5 to both sides, and then we divide both sides by 2. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5 or 2.5 or 5 halves. Any of those are just saying the same thing. So there, x equals 2.5.